season of the Wine O'Clock Show, proudly brought to you by Tom's Cap Vineyard Retreat. Escape to Tom's Cap. Carolyn's First National Real Estate, the number one choice for real estate on the Sunshine Coast. And the Olsen Hotel Art Series, right in the heart of Chapel Street. Christian Hull. <gasps> Hello. Oh my god, cheers. Welcome to the one o'clock show. Go, and when... go, go, go. <laughs> oh my god, he's going. Go, go, go. That's actually quite nice. Yeah, it's Tom's cap. I usually don't. Oh, well, I don't drink, <laughs> sorry. Water. That's really nice. <laughs> he did a, a bit of a Hamish and Andy there. Where Hamish like sculled his red. Did he? Yeah. On I his... saw that yeah. and you recorded and he that at like 8.30 in the morning. Yeah, we did. Oh, it's been a tough day, hasn't it? A tough and and he'd already hour. done like hours of media before then, so he okay, probably well, maybe really that's really why I was like, oh, I've got to get through this media. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you you. have been a massive fan of mine. My girlfriend of mine introduced me to you probably like twelve months ago um, about your YouTube videos. Mm. Trish, the property manager, because I oh yes. So I did some Googling yes. and there is a page on like realestate.com that hasn't been properly taken down and it's like, it's you. For, Me? Because you yeah, used to work at Ray White. Me? Was it Ray White? No, First National. First National. Yeah, yes. the circle with the triangle yes, in it. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, you used to work in property. I did property I management for so like many 20 questions years. For you. Oh, I still, do. Really? I still own a real estate office on the Sunshine Coast. That's amazing. Yes. And also horrible. How do you cope? <laughs> oh my God, I don't cope. I don't, that's why I don't do it anymore. Yeah, right. Because I because literally pissed myself laughing at your property management take because it is yeah. so true. Yeah. It is so true. Well, for those that don't know, I, yeah. I put on wigs and imitate other people's career, uh, their, their choices, their terrible, terrible career choices, and one was the property manager. Yes. And uh, I had a friend that is a property manager and just gave me a list of all the things, and I'm like, the, the comedy has written itself oh, from yeah. her real life experiences because yep. tenants are awful and then I learnt landlords are equally awful. Hi, I'm Trish. I'm a property manager. I really don't enjoy my job. I'm sick of pretending that I really like it. You know, I get phone calls every sec... Every... Hello? Sorry, say that again. You've crashed your car into the house. Oh, but you did it accidentally so the landlord has to pay for it. N no, that's definitely not happening. No. Every day I come into work and open my computer to see 700 emails that I have to respond to. And most of them are f bullshit. Hey Trish, the neighbour's cat is meowing very loudly. Can you please sort that out? What, you, what, is, what do they even want me to do? Kill the cat? I'm not killing. Look, I might kill the cat and it might relieve some of this tension that I have from being a property manager. Hey Trish, my neighbour keeps parking three centimetres too close to my car. Is that a question or a statement? Unfortunately, I dropped my wedding ring down the sink. Can you please sort out a plumber? My dog shat on the carpet and it left a stain. Oh, that's good. So I removed the section of carpet that was stained. You will need to replace it. She cut up a piece of carpet and expects me to replace... Who even does this? So I don't know. Oh, so you've yeah. left that now. I. I still own the real estate. I just don't yeah. do property management. You just anymore. pay other people yeah, to I do pay, with that. I, I yeah, pay yeah, staff to do that now. <laughs> <laughs> they cop the abuse. Oh my god, you have staff. I do. That's my goal. I want staff. Yeah. I want a. You go. No. Well, <laughs> I, want, I want to know what staff. You do. You just have real estate staff, or do you have like good staff, like other staff as well? No, mine are all real estate oh, staff. Oh boo! Yeah. yeah, I want like the chef oh. and a cleaner, yeah. and then a personal trainer to fix this. Right. So the chef will help fix this PT, and then a cleaner. That's my actual, that's your ultimate goal. That's my actual goal. Like that could be your New Year's up. resolution. Well, I feel like that's many, many moons away because it might cost a lot. <laughs> so, well, fingers uh, crossed that. Look, mm -hmm. you've made a career out of this short form 
YouTube content. How did you come up with it all and how did it all start? Um, so when I was at school, I always wanted to do radio, mm. and so I tried to get. I wanted to be Carl Sanderlands. Oh, really? Yeah, I know. Oh, Carl Sanders. I love Kyle. I like, love Kyle too. Oh, so great. And then um, I just tried doing that. And I've been. I still work in radio, but I, I tried to get on air, and I tried to. I, I was like, I'll be discovered. Like I'm so funny. Someone will discover me. So I just sat back and waited to be discovered. Never was, and then realised. The, the industry, it's very, it's very difficult and you have to sort mm. of, that you have to be a certain type of person and um, it just wasn't working. And so it's funny, as soon as you give up on something, stuff always happens. Mm. So the, I just was like, nah, it's not going to work out. So then I started filming and editing and um, learnt a lot of skills about that. And then I worked on a show called YouTube Hits. Late night show was sort of 10 to midnight. No one paid it much attention. But all we did was talk about things on YouTube and interview these huge YouTube celebrities because mainstream media just didn't want to talk yeah, to them because yeah. they don't get it. No. So uh, I watched them all and they all had this similar advice is if you want to do it, don't procrastinate, just start. Yes. And you, and you don't know what you want to do. It doesn't matter. Just start doing things and you work it out along the way. And so mm. I thought, well, I don't know what I want to do. So... Um, I just started making random videos and I haven't deleted any of them, yep. but the early ones are trash. They're so <laughs> shit and they make me <laughs> laugh because they're so bad. Mm. And then just through doing, um, I put on a wig and made a character called Trish. And so you can see sort of her develop from all that early stuff. Mm. And then it just sort of skyrocketed into this thing. And now, you know, like, I know it's like 70,000 subscribers you now have on your channel. Yeah. On YouTube. It's crazy. Know, it's crazy. It's so crazy. Is there a particular Trish moment or a particular episode that you've produced that really like resonates with you and that, you know, I know the, the Australian public, mm. you know, have fallen in love and even the World Wide Web has fallen in love, but is there particular things that you do that just resonates with you? Um, so I've got triplet brothers. Oh, and have so, you? Yeah, so Are I'm not a triplet. No, no, no. Oh, could you imagine? That'd be the worst. So my mum had a beautiful first child, went, let's just try for one more. Got three, ruined her life. Um, and so growing up, it was just crazy hectic. So mm. any mum content or any content where I'm like being a crazy mum yep. is, I, I love doing because it's like, that's just a reflection of my childhood. Mm. Not my mother. Is your mother's name Trish? No, no. so <laughs> Trish is actually based on my father. Oh, really? Because he's the intolerant, angry one. <laughs> And so that's where I get all the inspiration from. And everything <laughs> Trish does, my father did. Mm, that's what was going to be my question. Mm. We all love Trish, but where mm. did she stem from? So, yeah, like inherently dad. Like, because yeah. he would, he'd be all like, yeah, let's start the day. And then um, having four sons mm. really annoyed him a lot because uh, we were, I mean, kids are frustrating and annoying and I hate them. Um, <laughs> and then he would just snap and start screaming and everything would be screaming and yelling and oh, it would be chaos. And so I just channeled. That, that chaos and yeah. what I remember from dad into this character. Yeah. And I love it so much. I love playing like mum Trish. Mm. Is there is there a, an episode that you haven't done yet that you really want to do? <sighs> no, I, I just posted recently. I was like, because I feel like I'm out of mum stuff. Mm. Like I've done all of the stuff that I remember as a kid, but um, I don't have kids. Mm. So I'm like, help. What oh. other stuff can I do? What about, have you done like the, the learning to drive? Yes, I've done oh, learning okay, to drive. Yeah, yeah. I've done... Um, puberty? School drop offs. I've done teenagers. I haven't done okay. puberty. I've done teenagers. Yep. Which I feel is very similar. <laughs> like, just, they sleep the whole time. Their rooms are just full of the crockery and the yes. cups and knives. Oh my God, and then they, you're reminding yeah. me of my 16 year old. And they moment. never want to come yep. out of their room. This, that was me though. I, I just Clothes all over the floor. Yeah, everything's dirty. Bed's not made. House smells beautiful, but you go into their bedroom, it's this musky stench. <laughs> <laughs> You've landed a great um, radio gig with Kerry and Tom. How did that all come about? What was? How did that journey start? Um, oh, how did that start? So I've like jumped from shows, just I've done a lot of shows, mm. Dan and Maz, I've done Sydney Breakfast. Um, and then I think the opportunity came about to work with Carrie and Tommy and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll have a go, you know. I, it's a big commitment because it's a national sort of afternoon yeah. show. Yep. And so I was like, mm. oh, I was, I was getting paid a lot of money to do nothing. Yeah. And so I was like, no, oh, I'm really getting bored of doing absolutely no work for the company. Maybe I'll work on the show. And then... I got involved in it's such a fun, busy, chaotic show mm. and I loved it and the content that they make has just 
um, over the last year. They've just grown. Like the two of them are so much fun and they get along so well. Mm. And everything is, it doesn't feel like work. Yep. Um, and so, oh, I mean, the last few months have felt like work because we did so much. Like, because Carrie's pregnant yes. and Tommy's about to run a marathon in Antarctica. Yes. And so we've done a lot of content around, you know, she pretended to go into labour during the show. We had a gender reveal oh. balloon. We've been helping Tommy train in freezing conditions. Yes. So we started to do a lot more mm. and um, that's, it's been fun, but mm. it's just so crazy. Yes. And because Carrie hosts the project and Tommy does the Sunday project, they just don't have any time. Yeah, so yeah. it's been fun yeah. to try and work out when to go and you're just mm. doing so much in one week. And we did a photo, pregnancy photo shoot with Carrie. Yep. That Tommy organised. Yep. That was, um, oh, that's right. yeah. Yes, I saw. Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. If you haven't, you can, that's on our Instagram. But yes. like, do we, we've just done so much and it's just been such a whirlwind. Mm. And it's so good that now she's on maternity leave. You can just go, ah. Oh. Mm. You can look back at everything we've done over the last sort of six or seven weeks and mm. it's like a whole year's worth of content. Mm. So it's, I'm lucky that I've, I've worked with other shows for the last few years to be able to step in and, and sort of work on this show and be comfortable mm, mm. Um, because there's so much, there's so much happening. Yeah. But I've done it all before that yeah. I can sort of feel like. What's, what's your ultimate goal? Like where do you, where do you see yourself? What would be I like? Get asked, that, what, yeah, what yeah, would be I like get asked this all the time mm. and um, I mean, before we were having a chat, my, honestly, my ultimate goal is to be able to afford to have my own staff. <laughs> I want a personal chef, personal trainer, and a cleaner. And I want to literally just never leave the house. I'm not very social. The, really? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh, I'm very, like, being able to come here in this room, yeah. so much effort. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm just like, That surprises me, because you're so, like, out there, like, with you. With well, people think I'm want. out there. Yeah. I'm not out there at all. I love living alone. Yep. Um, I've come to the conclusion I will die alone. So fine with that. I hate relationships. Never been in one. Don't want to try it. Really? Um, yeah. I'm on Grindr 24-7. <laughs> um, but I love that. Like, I don't want any animals. I don't even want, like, I've got fake plants. I don't... Like, no responsibility. I want no responsibility in life. And the goal is just to keep making YouTube videos mm -hmm. and uh, Facebook stuff. Mm. So what I'm doing now, mm. I just want to keep doing. Do you see, a, um, for other, I guess, people that are stepping into that YouTube, because YouTube's becoming massive now. Yeah. How is it that, you know, I, I guess some advice stepping forward for the newcomers coming through to try and, who's trying to make a career out of YouTube? I still feel like a newcomer. Do you? Like, you look at mm. 70,000, you go, oh, yeah, but there's people with like 20 million. million. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And I feel like um, it's getting more and more competitive and you have to find something unique that you do. Mm. So, like, I'm lucky that um, I can do sort of write sort of comedy things yep. and it's sort of very personal. Um, I look at some of the ones that like vlogging, which is just mm. basically filming your day. Like so many people do that. So you really have to find something that's quite niche, yep. whether it be the way you edit mm. or your personality. Mm. It's, it's hard because it's sort of like anyone can do it and everyone does it. Yes. And you've got to be relentless and keep doing and you'll you slowly build an audience mm. but you have to find something that you're unique at yeah and a lot of people go, like personality is an easy one but you, you have to you have to have a good personality <laughs> so like some people yeah. i'll watch and i'm just like this is horrific yeah like, yeah and they put so much effort into it and you're like oh yeah mm. mm. and then some people who've got nobody are so creative and genius you're like okay if they keep at it they'll get they'll somewhere. just go yeah, places yeah, yeah so it's hit and miss mm. i think mm. and it's, it's a lot of work it is yeah it is hey i wanted to touch base um about a topic that came up in the news this week and mm. i wanted to get your input oh in i know exactly what it's going to be oh which one? Oh no yeah. maybe, maybe i don't does it involve a supermarket chain oh no oh thank god okay, okay. <laughs> but do tell us what that one is no because i'm obsessed with coles minis oh and they're oh, releasing new ones in a yes. few days yeah mm. anyway, it was cool. a worker has been awarded ten thousand dollars for unfair dismissal um after being fired for downloading hardcore porn onto his computer at work mm. and the fair work commission says that the worker did not go against any of the employees policies so do you right. uh, yeah is this something that you agree with or God. disagree with should have you been fired or i not? mean that is so relatable because <laughs> haven't we all downloaded a bit of hardcore porn from work no no, no. Well, if it's not in like the terms and conditions of the employment, 
No, well, I'm, I mean, I think it's so stupid. To, we all know not to download hardcore porn at work. Like, that's just a com There was a guy, like, this was, that's nothing. There was a guy that downloaded, like, 20 gigs of porn. I think it was in, in the States. Usually he'd come in on the weekend, use the work Wi-Fi, and just download it all and save it. And, like, he built oh. up this huge collection. And I was like, that's, I mean, it's clever. That's hardcore. But, yeah, that's <laughs> hardcore. But, I mean, was he fine? He was fired by the employer. Yeah. But then he was awarded ten thousand dollars. Oh right, for unfair dismissal. Yeah, <gasps> because apparently there was the nothing dream? in their terms and conditions to yeah, say that you can't download. Well, that's weird because normally every workplace is really good with their Wi-Fi yeah. after hours use. Well, even too like I know that we even in our employment agreements at work, it says you can't download. You know that type of stuff. Yeah, ours. Or... I mean, ours one hundred percent does. Yeah, because we get every time. So here's where I've been caught. Christian so, Hull's coming in. Let's yeah. get out the porn clause. Yes. <laughs> it is like that because like um, so when celebrity nudes are leaked, you're like, oh, okay, oh, it's for research purposes. I'm just going <laughs> to go and have a look. And then um, you'll get a from HR, oh, we've just noticed that this has been flagged. You're like, oh, no, it was for a story it's we were doing on air. Uh, a thing, it was the... Gah! And so they know. Instantly. Um, well, pretty quickly, wow. within, like, it gets flagged. So our yep. workplace, we can't. But I'm like, good on this person. Yep. 10 grand, I mean, 10 grand, yeah. I wonder what the job was. I don't know. I that'd be that like, it'd be weird if it was like a doctor. Yeah. It's just like, why are you using, yeah. Porn on your mm. yeah, work computer mm. while you're supposed to be watching patients. Just don't, just don't download I just porn. don't know why you would do that at all in a workplace. In, oh, I was thankfully even, you added in a workplace. I get even get funny about like when I'm on the plane and I'm traveling and I'm watching like Shameless and there's like yeah. a sex scene and I'm just like, who else is watching? I better shut this down. In the plane because yeah. everyone can see what <laughs> you're watching and sometimes I'll, if I go on like to Grinder, or is it, <laughs> you know, and it's open and it's just there are some things on that and you're like, the trick is to turn the brightness down. Oh, so okay. because So you can just see the screen but you know anyone further away from you can't, can't. see it. But I've been caught on a plane um, when you look up uh, exploitative images, close your phone, then you're bored, and then you open your phone, and it's the first thing that pops up. <laughs> and I could just hear the guy in the back, like, <laughs> laugh, because, you know, a giant yep. dick popped up on my phone. And you can't get out of it quick enough. You can't, you can't, it's uh, so true. So what does 2019 have in store for you? So I, I just had this talk with my manager, the manager, I know, stop it, um, because I don't like planning, I just really go with the flow, Understand. which, yeah, he hates, um, because I get overwhelmed so easily. Yes. Two things on my list, I'm like, Ugh! I shut down. Um, but then we had a discussion, so I'm doing a national tour, yes. so we're doing all the oh, fantastic. comedy, I don't know if I I, I'm pretty sure, I don't know, I mean, we've been talking about it for yes. a while, ah, who cares. Yeah. Um, so I'm doing, like, doing that, yeah. um, that's sort of the first few months, yeah. going everywhere, maybe New Zealand. Yeah, nice. Um, uh, I'm in a feature film. <gasps> Are yeah, you? Yeah, I know. Oh, that wine's going to come up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Embarrassing. Yeah, so last year, I shot scenes for a movie directed by Rachel Griffiths. <gasps> I know. Oh my God, who's in it, you ask? Yes. Teresa Palmer, uh, Sam Neill, yes, uh, Brooke Satchwell. There's a whole like it's a it's a full it's Australian cast. It was shot here. It's about Michelle Payne who won uh, the 2015 yes. Melbourne Cup, mm. and so it's sort of like a biopic of her life, mm. which is fascinating. She's gone through so much, yep. and I I see your face and you're like, why are you in such <laughs> a serious film? And I am asking myself the same question. <laughs> the scene that I'm in. Um, Do we really have to look hard for you? Or oh, you... no, 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 I've got lines. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it's one of the saddest scenes in the movie. <laughs> Getting um, laughs. <laughs> was, I, I love the fact that um, good old my mate Griffo, Rachel Griffiths. Yeah, bestie. Um, yeah, we're totes, totes best. Yeah. Um, had seen some of the stuff and uh, her just... friend was one of the assistant directors. And wow. they're like, well, just bring him in and he can just do a little bit part. And so I just have a couple of lines. It's toward the end of, of the, the show. If it makes it in. Okay. So that's the key. It could get cut out. It's such a pivotal scene mm. that I don't think it, they can cut it out. Yeah, yeah. Because it ruins the story. story. So thank well God. Well done. Yeah, I know, I'm so excited for that. When does that come out? 
I don't know. Oh. I'm assuming it'll be around Melbourne Cup, so it might oh, be like okay. middle yeah, of next yeah. year. Yeah, wow. So tomorrow I'm going in. This is how I found out that I'm pretty sure I'm in the film. Tomorrow I'm going in um, to. I just learned to like dub my lines in. Yes. So like they shoot a bunch of scenes and obviously what they piece together is a bit chaotic. So mm. you go back into the studio and you sort of say your lines in a smooth, mo my one line in a smooth motion. So I'm yes. like, well, if they wanted me to do that, then I Ooh, must yes. be in the film. Yeah. So I was like, yes. Very good. I know. So that's I can tick exciting. that off. So that's sort of tour. Yep. I'm in a movie. Um, I might be doing, releasing a book. Oh, cool. Yeah. So are um, we going to see more of your YouTube as well? Oh, yeah, that's yeah, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. like the, that's always going to be going happen. on. Yeah, mm. that's the fun part. More okay. radio. Yep, yep. Another big year. Yeah. Oh, now that I think about it, it's like tiring and depressing. <laughs> Do you know that that's like, you know, five things on a list? <laughs> I know, I know, but they're ages away. Yes, they're, they're a long you've got time away. to prep yeah. and plan. Yeah. Do you want to have a little fun with a game of quick questions? Oh, dear. Yeah. It makes me nervous, but okay. You won't know what's coming. The wine's coming up again. Mm. <laughs> oh my god, sorry. So, it's a really nice aftertaste when you burp. <laughs> Tom's Caps would be very happy with that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you a question, mm -hmm. and then you give me the answer. And if you've got a why, we like to hear about that too. Okay. Okay. Yeah? What TV character is your spirit animal? <gasps> oh. Oh. See. Mm. Um, Oscar the Grouch, but I really want to be Karen Walker from Will and Grace. Oh my God, oh. she's the best. I know, but so yeah, Oscar the Grouch. I'm just grumpy at everything. You? Yes. Are you? Yeah. No. A lot of things. I try. I hide it really well. I don't want to be known as Oscar the Grouch, mm. but be because I live at home, I'll just come home and scream into a pillow a lot of just about stupid things. It's like my father, really. What has been your biggest career challenge so far? Ooh. Um. <laughs> um. He doesn't have any challenges. No, no. Um. What is the weirdest thing a fan has ever said or done to you? Oh my God. So I went and I did my first sort of live shows and uh, Sian is her name. She was like, oh, can you sign here? I'm going to get a tattoo of your signature. Oh my goodness. And I was like, N you can't. Like, I don't know. Don't ruin your body with a tattoo. And she was so adamant. I was like, all right, all right. So I signed it. And then next minute she went and had a tattoo of my signature on her arm. I was like, oh, that's so cool. You know you've made it when I someone tattoos know. themselves. I can retire <laughs> wonderfully now. With your chef and your butler oh. and your maid and your... <laughs> and Maybe Sian she'll come and be tattoo. your maid. I could convince her to. Yeah. I'll pay her nothing. <laughs> What's the funniest thing that's ever happened to you while on air? <laughs> while on air. Um... The funnest for me was when I was put in charge of buying our show Spice Girls tickets. Yes. So, uh, you know, you go home. I was given like the head of the hit network. I had her uh, credit card and I had like a list of instructions of only what I was allowed to buy <laughs> and I didn't get any of them. So I then went on to a ticket reseller, you know, like highly illegal. Yes. And I, I spent the whole budget on, so she wanted 20 tickets so we could take listeners and do a yes. thing. And I had three grand, that's what I was going to get. But instead I spent the three grand on five tickets for the show. So for me that was like, the greatest moment and then just revealing that on air to our um, executive producer who's like that was her job was supposed to buy the tickets but then she gave it to me oh, so she was no. she was yeah. livid so that was just fun yeah just because i did all the bad stuff and she got into trouble oh. um and uh, the off-air moment was when i filmed an entire interview but forgot to hit record on the cameras oh, oh my god no. i've done More so many horrible things um and it was with dan and maz and when they interviewed The Rock, yes. Dwayne Johnson. Oh, oh my God. You would have died. Oh, I did, but I blamed it on. So this is what I did. So um, other people film it, yes. right? Because it's a big press junket. Yep. And they give you these two memory cards with the footage. So the Dan and Maz camera angle and the Dwayne The Rock Johnson camera angle. Yep. So I got them, I put the Dan and Maz one in the computer, ripped the footage off, went to the bathroom, came back, put the other card in, ripped the footage off. Cleared both the cards because I needed to film something right away. Went and filmed it. Came back. I'd actually ripped the Dan and Maz footage off twice. 
So oh. I only had their camera angle oh. and I didn't have the rock. Oh. And so I was like, guys, I don't know what happened. I think it must have glitched over there. So it wasn't me. Yeah. And like the They've whole- given me a faulty USB I stick. I ruined the whole thing. <gasps> oh, all oh. that work. I yeah. know, geez. Did, and you just said you're going to see the Spice Girls. Yes. Then are they in Australia or are you going no, to No, 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 work's paying. Wow. Well, I'm hoping, we're trying to convince work to pay to send the Carrie and Tommy show nice. over in the UK. I yes. know, wouldn't that be great? <gasps> That's a childhood like, that would be like, fantasy. Because yeah. I was obsessed with the Spice Girls. Wow. Mm. Yeah, and are you disappointed that Posh isn't going to be in the band? I mean, it would be great if she was, mm. but I think she has like terrible stage fright. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Who was your first celebrity crush? <sighs> oh. Um, probably Jonathan Taylor Thomas from Home, Home Improvement. Oh yeah, yes, Home yes, yeah. yes yeah. absolutely. Now it's Zac Efron. Is he the, oh Zac Efron, yeah, well, hello. He was Simba. Who was Simba? JTT. Ah. Yeah, he was the voice of Simba, young okay. Simba. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. What was the last thing you Googled? <laughs> Do we even want to know um, after the conversation we just had? Well, <laughs> I mean, oh, are you able to grab my phone? <laughs> what is the last thing that I Googled? It's, honestly, it probably is porn. Oh, stop it. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you though. <laughs> he's yeah. going yeah. to improve it. Thanks, Ash. Big black dicks. <laughs> um, no, I actually really want to know. Oh, you know why? I cleared my Google search history. Because you knew that this was going to Well, do you know up. what's trending at the moment? Tumblr, have you heard of Tumblr? It's like this big, it's like a, it's a super big social site, like all the young kids use it. Right, no. But um, a lot of people, there's a lot of porn on Tumblr. And you know what they just decided? Getting rid of Tumblr porn. Oh. I am devastated. <laughs> um, what is your most used emoji? Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think the eggplant followed by the water droplets. And what does that mean in... I, don't, I know the eggplant You're thing. You're such What's a the, mum. <laughs> What's an eggplant with water droplets? Is the eggplant a dick, isn't it? Yes. And the oh, water okay, droplets. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. All right, I'm with you. And then I'm this face, you. you know, like, <laughs> with the tongue out. Because I try to be as unsubtle on Grinder as humanly possible. <laughs> What's one thing that we would never know about you? <gasps> it really is, I talk about, so I have a podcast, and yeah. I just talk about everything. everything. Mm. Um, I mean, there are gross facts that people say I shouldn't admit to, like, I don't wash my bed sheets. Like I'll go seven months without washing really? my bed sheets. Yep. Um, you do know that we've got to wash them every week. Yeah, that is so much effort. <laughs> Making the bed is such a punish. It's like doing a cardio workout. <laughs> Just changing the bottom. Do you wash sheet. bottom? Do you have bottom top sheet doona? What's the purpose of a top sheet? Hello, I know. I'm the same. And I, I just get a... tangled and annoyed. Yep. I was just doona. Yep. Yeah. I'm I've got the bottom sheet. Bottom sheet doona. But I have gone to make the bed and taken everything off and then for like a good month just slept with on the mattress with doona with no doona cover, pillows with our pillowcases. <laughs> sure. Yeah. What's your favourite movie of all time? <gasps> the Labyrinth with David Bowie. Oh. And uh, Return to Oz. So it's oh, the, it's yep, the yep, yep. Two. sequel to, but it, they're both like 80s films yep. that are weird. But I, I, they, I love them. Oh, they're so good. Mm. What's your hidden talent? <clears throat> um, I used to play the clarinet. Yes. I did that for like nine years, saxophone and piano. Terrible now. I promise so. I won't burst out laughing like I did on Hamish and Andy when, when Andy said he played the trumpet. Oh, yeah. Oh. So He's actually not that bad. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. Oh. I think I insulted him. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, hidden talent. PG hidden talent. Um, <laughs> oh, I, I'm come from a really artistic family. Mm. My mum was a fashion designer. She did pottery. Like mum's side of the family, like all just really good at art. So I grew up a lot with art, and I'm really good. I love making like wire sculptures oh, wow. and big yeah, yeah. like big pieces. Mm. And I feel like I'm pretty good. I haven't yep. done it in a long time, but I used to love just sitting and like weaving metals and wow. making all this stuff. Like I've got a lot of it at home. Mm. Do you sell it? Uh, no, because that's it's so much effort to go and yeah, true. And trying to post postage is so expensive. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the last TV show you binge watched? <gasps> Sabrina. 
Oh, so on Netflix. I haven't seen that yet. It's so good. Mm. It's nothing like the Sabrina from when I was when we yeah, were like yeah, younger. Yeah, yeah, Sabrina the teenager. Yeah, Witch. which was like all light yeah. and fun. Yes. Uh, this is dark. This is sort of like um, Stranger Things. Oh, so it's, okay. So it's really sort of dark and evil. It's not too scary, but I wouldn't. It, it's for like older generation. Tweens like, and yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What's your most annoying habit? Laughing. I have a really aggressive, loud, I go from zero to like 100 straight away. So it's like, scream! <laughs> like really loud and people jump and they get annoyed. And it brings me joy. Yes. Um, but it doesn't bring anybody else much joy. My guilty pleasure is? Cheese platters. I'll have a cheese platter for dinner. Oh, really? Not at the moment, because I'm trying to be really healthy, um, which is really, really hard. It is so hard. Cheese is the greatest food of all time. <laughs> um, Especially when you go to hotels and they just like, all you have to do is like, you pick up the phone, push one button and a cheese platter just comes to your door. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Red or white wine? Um, white, because I'm not a big wine drinker yeah. and red's too strong. Mm. It's too much. Well, Christian, thank you so much. <sighs> Cheers. It's over already. It's over already. Oh, so much fun. Oh, thank you. Cheers. Now, yes. before you go, we have a beautiful gift oh. bag for you. In there is a beautiful oh. bottle of Tom's Cap <gasps> wine that you've been drinking today. Gifts. Have a look. Something for Trish in there too. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Cuff <gasps> links. Oh my god, so fancy. Yes. <gasps> it's nice. Cuff link. Oh my gosh. Something in there for Trish. <laughs> She'll love it. Oh, it's a beautiful colour. <laughs> Gorgeous by Bobby Brown. Beautiful, look at you. I'm not very good at putting on lipstick. <laughs> it looks perfect. Is it, is it really good? It looks good. Oh, stop <laughs> it. What else have we got in here? Some beautiful hand cream. <gasps> oh, this is so lovely. And yeah. then the wine, and, which and will the be wine. gone. Yes. Oh, it's already finished. <laughs> oh, thank you so much no, for having me. This you. has been great. Excellent. Cheers. Here's cheers, to the weekend. Cheers, cheers, cheers. I'm going to get lipstick all over the glass. Yes, you do that. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. When in Melbourne, the Wine O'Clock show stays and films at the Olsen Art Series Hotel, a perfect location right in the heart of Chapel Street, Melbourne. This season of the Wine O'Clock show proudly brought to you by Tom's Cap Vineyard Retreat, Escape to Tom's Cap. Carolyn's First National Real Estate, the number one choice for real estate on the Sunshine Coast. And the Olsen Hotel Art Series, right in the heart of Chapel Street.